Until the late 1800, gunfire at sea was notoriously inaccurate because firing a fixed gun on a rolling and pitching ship and trying to hit another ship was not easy. In one study, they found that out of 9,500 shots fired, only 121 hit their targets. In 1900, a young lieutenant joined the wardroom of the Kentucky, the newest battleship. He started comparing what he observed in Europe with what he found on board the his battleship. He confidently concluded that the U.S. Navy still had wide room for improvement. While visiting Hong Kong, he had a chance encounter with a Royal Navy Captain Percy Scott, who opened his eyes to a significant way he could improve American naval gunnery, performance, and standing. Scott devised new sights employing telescopic optics and regulated the elevation mechanisms on his big guns. The telescope let his sailors see enemy ships at the extreme ranges of the naval guns and constantly adjust the gun barrels as the ship moved. He immediately took it back to his squadron and began training, crews, on the new techniques. He became convinced that the new improvements was absolutely vital to the U.S. Navy. He continued to gather specific data and send more reports to the Washington community, but his reports were ignored. He sent more reports over the course of two years, so the Bureau decided to run its own test to conclusively prove him wrong. They mounted a gun at the Washington Navy Yard. They had not changed the gearing of the gun as his reports instructed, and they tested it on firm, dry land instead of a rolling ship deck. And they stood by their assertion that proved continuous same gunfire was essentially a fabrication and impossible all along. He felt his career was over. So, in an act of futile desperation, he did something that he later admitted was the rankest kind of insubordination. He wrote a letter to President Theodore Roosevelt, a former assistant secretary of the Navy and a knowledgeable student of naval affairs. Roosevelt read the letter and realized that if what he claimed and documented was possible, then it would have significant ramifications. Violating accepted Navy practice and tradition and usurping the entire hierarchy, Roosevelt recommended that the Bureau of Navigation fill the relatively obscure position of inspector of target practice by bringing him home from China Station. He was promoted to lieutenant commander, and in the span of just a few years, he changed naval warfare forever. This story is about William Sims an admiral in the U.S. Navy, who fought, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, to modernize the Navy. This tells us well about the intransigence of the leaders, at the top of the organization, and the importance of a leader's determination, raw grit, and persistence to make it happen.